Hi everyone, this is Selena. Welcome back to one of my videos. I hope you're well. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name's Selena and I release a crochet tutorial every week. And this week I'm bringing to you this beautiful vintage cape. It's um, like a shoulder warmer and it's really cute and feminine. It's a really easy project to make. It features um, the crumpled griddle stitch, which I will be explaining in detail in this tutorial. And it also features two buttons, which I absolutely adore. I really love um, this project. It's really, really easy to make. So this per the free pattern will be available as always on my blog, selinaveronique.com. The link is in the down bar. And this project comes in sizes S to triple XL. So check out um, my blog and the free pattern to um, follow along the instructions for each um, different size. I will be demonstrating size S um, for this pro for this video, but you can follow along. Um, and crochet your um, preferred size without any problems, that's absolutely fine. Just follow along with the free pattern. So for this project, I used two skeins of paint box yarns, special Aran, and this is a beautiful yarn. It's 100% acrylic. It's a medium four Aran size yarn, and um, yeah, it's really amazing. It's so soft and this is color 241. Again, I will be linking in the down bar um, all the uh, materials that I used and the exact color, etc, etc. So I used two skeins for this size um, and I will be indicating in the free pattern how many skeins you will be needing for your size. I also used a 5mm crochet hook as well as a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle. You will also be needing two, um, I think this is a 15 millimeter um, button. So you will be needing two, I will be linking some in um, the down bar once again, um, and you will be needing darning thread and needle to sew onto the project, and that's it. So yes, I will be using US terms with British terms in brackets. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And special shout out to my patrons once again. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. And all my links and socials will be linked in the down bar. So to begin this tutorial, you will be making a slip knot. So just go ahead and create your slip knot, like so. Pop your hook through and tighten. And what you will be doing now is chaining 40. So just go ahead and chain 40. One, two, three, so I've gone ahead and chained less for my sample, but the principle is the exact same. So you should have 40 chains. I am going to um, say again that um, this is for size S, 40 chains. So if you are making a different size, just don't forget to check out my free pattern on my blog linked in the down bar and see how many chains you need. But the principle will be exactly the same um, whatever size you choose to make. So now that you've um, chained 40, you are going to be counting one, two, three, and four um, chains from the hook. And in that fourth chain from the hook, you will be placing a single crochet. So to do your single crochet, just pop your hook through directly and pull up a loop. You have two loops on your hook take your yarn and pull through two loops and that's a single crochet and the first chain three at the beginning counts as a double crochet so now what you are going to be doing in the next chain is placing a double crochet so just go ahead and wrap your yarn around your hook go into that chain like so and pull up a loop. You've got three loops on your hook. Take your yarn and pull through two loops 
and take your yarn and pull through two loops and that is a double crochet. Now in the next um, chain you will be placing a single crochet and in the next chain you will be placing a double crochet. So we are alternating double crochets and single crochets all the way along. So I've placed a single crochet. Now I am going to be placing a double crochet and then a single crochet. And so there we go. This is what I have for now. And we started our, um, this row began with a double crochet and we finished this row with okay, a single crochet. Okay, so this crochet. is row one of this crumpled um, griddle stitch. And so this is an alternation um, of the normal griddle stitch. So the norm classic griddle stitch, let's just say. So the classic griddle stitch would be an alternation of double crochets and single crochets from stitch to stitch like we've just done, but also from row to row. So we would be alternating double crochets and single crochets from row to row. However, with the crumpled griddle stitch, um, we are simply going to be alternating double crochets and single crochets from stitch to stitch and not row on row. But that will make sense um, now that I'm going to show you the rest of the pattern. So um, for row two, um, we are going to be... So we finished on a single crochet. So what we are going to be doing now for row two is chain one turn your work and so um, we are simply going to be placed and this counts as a single crochet that goes on top of this single crochet from the previous row and now in the next stitch we are going to be placing a double crochet um, so just go ahead and place a double crochet and that is on top of the double crochet from the previous row and in the next stitch we are placing a single crochet. So as you can see we are alternating double crochets and single crochets for this row but we are not alternating double crochets and single crochets from row to row so that means that we are placing the exact same t stitch on top of the stitch from the previous row so the next stitch we are going to be placing is a double crochet which will be going on top of the double crochet from the previous row and now we are placing a single crochet into the next stitch and a double crochet on top of the double crochet from the previous row and then a single crochet and then a double crochet and so this is row two so now for row three we are going to be chaining three one two and three and turn your work in this first stitch here counts as your first double crochet which goes above um, the double crochet from the previous row and now we are going to be placing a single crochet into the next stitch which is a single crochet on top of the single crochet from the previous row and now a double crochet so it's really really easy this pattern is really really easy just alternate single crochets and double crochets and just place a double crochet on top of double crochets and place a single crochet on top of single crochets so like I said this is very easy um, going forward we are simply going to be alternating row 2 and row 3 um, going forward so it's going to be really really easy and just remember that you are placing um, the same stitch on top of the stitch from the previous row so we finished on a single crochet so for the next row chain one 
this counts as a single crochet and go into the next stitch with a double crochet and then into the next stitch with a single crochet and then into the next stitch with a double crochet and then into the next stitch with a single crochet. So this is really easy. Um, yeah, just alternate um, row two and row three until um, you reach the number of rows that you need. And so for, um, for this pattern, we need, let me just check in my book, um, we need 94 rows in total so i'll just let you carry on so for size s you need 94 rows and once you've completed your 94 rows or however many rows you need for the size that you are making um i will get back to you with the rest of the pattern so um just carry on alternating row two and row three and i'll get back to you to show you the rest okay so i've done my 94 rows and now i'm going to show you the simple border that i'm going to add before um finishing off this project i adore the way it looks and also um i think my neighbor is um has her lawnmower on so I apologize if you can hear a bit of noise. So now I'm going to show you the um, the border. So we are going to be placing a border all around this rectangle. So we will be going up this side and then this side and then down and then all the way across once again. And so I'm just going to show you how to um, do that. So um, to begin we are going to be um, crocheting across the top and this is going to be the easy part because this is um, the part of what I call the stitches. So you will be placing a single crochet, I'll be showing you, but just so you know, you'll be placing a single crochet into each stitch across the top and then um, I will be showing you what to do in the corner but just so you know after that when we reach this side yeah we will be placing single crochets all along this edge in a an even and balanced way but again I will be showing you this once we reach that place so now for this um, border you will be chaining one and this chain one counts as a stitch as a single crochet now go into the next I am going to zoom in a bit there we go. So now we are going to be going into the next stitch with a single crochet and into the next stitch with a single crochet and another single crochet and just place a single crochet all the way along until you reach the corner. Sorry, I was out of focus. There we go, so just go ahead and place a single crochet and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I've reached the first corner and what we are going to be doing um, is placing two double crochets here. So one and two, so place two double crochets in that last stitch. And what we are going to be doing now is working all the way across this edge. And this edge, as I said, is the wrong side of the stitches. So that means there's not a specific stitch into which you will be placing your single crochets. Um, so you need to place them at an, an equal interval, if that makes sense. So you need to make sure that you place enough single crochets along this edge, but you don't want too many and you don't want too few. So just use your own judgment there isn't a specific amount of um, single crochets that you will be placing. They just need to be nice and evenly placed. So once you reach um, the next corner of the rectangle, you will be placing two single crochets in that corner and then turn your project round and work on the other side. And then again, you will be reaching the third corner and so place two single crochets into that and then you will be working all the way along the other long side 
and then I'll get back to you to show you how to um, finish off this project. If you need more help with this part of the tutorial, just rewind the video or just check out my free pattern on my blog, selinaveronuk.com and I'll meet you back to show you how to finish off this round. Okay, so I've reached the beginning and what I am going to be doing is slip stitching through the first, so I'm just going to zoom in, you are going to be slip stitching, so I finished here and I'm going to slip stitch through the first stitch that we made and pull through and now you are going to be fastening off like so and tidying up your loose end. So just do that and then I'll meet you back to show you how to finish off this project. Okay, so now we are going to be, um, so we finished the border and now I'm going to, going to show you how to um, create the, the kind of cape shape. So what you want to do is um, fold your project like I've just done. So you are going to be popping your project like this flat and then closing it over like so. So that's what I've done and I'm just going to measure um, that's about four-ish inches if that makes sense. So that's what you are going to be measuring and folding over. And so now I'm going to be sewing my buttons onto the project. So for my part I have these white buttons that I think look really, really nice and they have kind of a quilted design and I think they're probably about um, 15 millimeters. I did get them in a department store near where I live but um, I will try and link similar um, buttons. These are the ones that I've decided to use, um, but like I say, you can use whichever ones you prefer and I'm just going to place them um, approximately here and then I'm going to sew them on the other side of the label. Okay, so I've popped my, um, my string onto my um, needle and I'm going to um, sew these buttons on but on the other side of, um, on the other label, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to remove one of those and then um, pop it, sew it later. And I'm just going to measure this and see if it'll fit. So that seems um, quite good. So I'm going to sew my button on this side. Obviously you can choose whichever side you want to sew your button on but this is the side that I've chosen and yeah so just go ahead um, and sew this in. So this is quite easy I've got um, my button which is a two um, it has two holes in so it'll be pretty straightforward to sew it in with my um, my um, string. So just go ahead and do that and then I'll show you how to sew in your second button. Okay so as you can see I've sewed on my um, sorry so I've sewed on my button and I've just tested it um, to see if it closes and it does close over so I'm really pleased about that. I will be placing a second button so I'm just measuring this just to see um, where I need to sew it just so that it looks nice and it's easy to um, yeah. So there we go I'm going to sew this So I'm going to sew this button here. So just go ahead and do that and measure your project to sew your button in. Um, yeah, and then I'll show you um, what to do then. Okay, so there we go. I finished sewing this in and I'm just going to check um, the buttons and see if it 
fastens how I want it to but I'm really pleased with how this has um, turned out I'm really pleased um, with this project this is what it looks like and I think it's really adorable and yeah I hope you enjoyed this tutorial let me know in the comments if you did and let me know um, yeah what other project you would like me to um, to do a tutorial for thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and yes yeah, see you next week Thank you.